Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's Epiphone's signature guitar season. So a couple of weeks ago, I predicted the launch of the Brendan Small Ghost Horse, and that came out a week later than I thought it would. And then we just yesterday got the Jared James Nichols Gold Glory. I'm sure we'll review that one in the future. But today, I thought we would check out the Emily Wolf Epiphone Sheraton Stealth. Now, if you're not familiar with Emily's work, you can check her out. She's all over YouTube and all the regular places that you can buy music. Her music falls under like the blues and rock category, and she's actually a really fantastic guitar player. And she did most of her growing up in Austin, Texas. So your homework for today's episode is to check out some of her original music. I believe she's just uh, self-titled within her band, so searching Emily Wolf will show you everything you need to know. I didn't even know about her until she got the signature instrument. And that's what I love about signature guitars. It helps me learn about new artists in a hands-on manner. But what makes her signature instrument so cool is it's one of those guitars that even if you've never heard of Emily before, you're still going to be interested in this guitar because it blends elements of signature guitars in the past. And hey, Epiphone Sheratons are just really good guitars. Basically the Epiphone version of like a 335. So let's check out her new stealth model. There she is. Okay. Right out of this box, what I'm noticing that's different here is my biggest critique for the whole stealth thing is you've got gold hardware. <laughs> gold hardware definitely kind of stands out more so than what I would normally think when Gibson or Epiphone uses the whole stealth moniker. But it's actually like a, a satin gold. That's interesting. I really like that. And of course, the biggest thing that's gonna stand out here is check out our diamond F holes. They're not really F holes anymore. They're just diamond holes, but that just sounds weird to say. <laughs> so basically, if you are a big Dave Grohl fan or a Trini Lopez fan, where these things originally came from, you now have a way to get a guitar that looks very similar to that on a budget. These are $799 brand new. Now that is kind of expensive for an Epiphone, but just feeling this right away, it's a lot heavier than I was expecting. I remember uh, watching her interview that she was saying it's kind of a chunky guitar. Definitely one of the heavier semi hollow body guitars I've had. Like it's not ridiculously heavy, but we'll throw it on the workbench and get the actual weight. But what else do we got going on here? It looks like for her signature. Oh, that's cool. Did you guys see that? Her signature Emily Wolf right there. It kind of plays peekaboo at certain angles. You can't see it, but then if you get it in the light, you can see it. I was not expecting that, but I did know about this whole tattoo type thing on the back. So normally the Sheratons, they'll have like a V-shaped pattern right here, but these have lightning bolts <laughs> and a double lightning bolt at the 12th fret. That's that's interesting, especially the fact that they kind of hide the 15th fret one and then they don't do it for the top three. Oh, geez. Wow. They have multiple binding channels on here, too. Wow. They actually did a lot more cosmetically to this guitar than I was even expecting. But if you do purchase one of these, obviously you get the guitar and it comes with what Epiphone calls their EpiLite case. Do I think you need to upgrade this to a hard shell case? Honestly, no, this feels pretty good. I remember my first experience with an EpiLite case was the original JJN and I was kind of on the fence about it, but this I mean, it feels good, very secure. It's like a rigid foam. I wouldn't trust throwing your guitar off a roof in this case, but most cases aren't good enough for that. The only thing I think they should add to these is like a, a little lid ribbon right here so these things don't flop over. And instead of having a pouch on the inside, it is on the outside. So what do we got for case candy here? Nothing too much, just an Epiphone sticker and a, a guarantee tag. It looks like the typical Grover hang tag as well, so nothing too special there. So to learn more about the Emily Wolf Epiphone Sheraton, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs before we get to a playing demonstration. Inside the Sheraton Stealth, let's take a look at it. So our pickups are just the standard Epiphone Alnico Classic Pro pickups. So you don't get Gibson pickups in this one or anything like that. But hopefully these things will sound pretty good. I get readings of 7.83 in the bridge, neck position 7.6, 7.5, 7.7, 7.8, 7.9, 7.10, 7.11, 7.12, 7.13, 7.14, 7.15, 7.16, 7.17, 7.18, 7.19, 7.20, 
So they're just, you know, standard styled humbuckers here, 3.85 in the middle. But I wanted to take a closer look at this gold hardware on here before we continue. So the website actually calls it lightly aged gold hardware. Now to me, it just looks like it has a matted finish over top of it, not necessarily aged aged. It just looks like a really old guitar that the gold hardware is just not necessarily been played a lot. It just, it just has some light corrosion to the top. I have seen this before. I mean, compare this to a shiny golden cover. This is what I was completely expecting. It'd be shiny and in your face and kind of, you know, the opposite of when I think of stealth. But I think this is a fantastic spec that they've got going on here. It's just a matte gold look and that includes on the bridge and tailpiece as well show you a comparison here with a regular Nashville style from Gibson. So it's a little bit uh, lighter of a color of gold as well. But inside our neck pickup cavity, we can see our little identification tag. It says Emily Wolf, she Rayton bag. <laughs> I think we all know what that stands for. And it's got a long neck tenon here that extends into our control cavity. Honestly, the routing job looks pretty good on this example. The spec sheets are saying this is a multi-ply maple body. So in Gibson territory, that usually means a maple poplar maple sandwich, but apparently this one's just straight up maple. Then you can see your spruce bracing right here on the top. It's kind of covered over in black. And then you get a maple center block before you get to the rest of your bracing on the back side. As far as going inside the instrument, we can see our kerfing along the edge right here. It doesn't look quite as nice as the Gibson kerfing. Well, you can also see that up here on the top. It almost looks like they used mahogany. But this is at the top of the horn. You can see where the kerfing just kind of stops as they shape it into the neck block right there. Now our electronics in here are supposed to be CTS, which is kind of a nice upgrade for an Epiphone. We'll see if we can get that on camera here. Yep, CTS, you can see it right there. Now we're inside the other F hole taking a look at the center block here. So again, we can see the kerfing along the edges of the instrument. So pretty basic construction on this one. And on the inside of the instrument, you get an Epiphone tag where it reads Emily Wolf Sheraton, and it's got your serial number right there. Cool, so our bridge itself is one of the Loctone series bridges. It's actually on there so tight, I could not remove it. So I'm just gonna leave that be. It would just say Epiphone on the back anyways. But our tailpiece here, we can take a quick look at that. It also reads Epiphone on the back. And as far as the controls, you get a three-way toggle switch. That's just regular bridge, middle, neck. You get independent volume controls for each of them. I would assume this one's your neck, this one's your bridge, but just a single master tone. And the output jack is located on the front. It feels like a satin with a little bit of a texture to it, like an eggshell feel. But the Epiphone spec sheet actually calls this an aged gloss. I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest. It seems to uh, take fingerprints and just kind of leave them there. See what I mean? It's really attractive to dust. So if you're one of those OCD people that don't like a bunch of fingerprints on your guitar, maybe not the finish for you. It's just kind of a mix between a gloss and a satin finish is the best way to put it, in my opinion. Kind of chalkboard-esque. But taking a look at our diamond F holes here, they are bound. Some of the photos, it was kind of hard to see if it was going to be bound or not, but you kind of have that aged cream looking binding along the entire instrument. And pay special attention to how many layers there are. So there's five on the top, and then there's going to be three on the back, where it's just single ply for the diamond holes. But then moving on from here, we get to our neck. I was not expecting this. Check that out. So you get single ply binding around the entire neck, but then you get a layer of rosewood before it splits off into additional three ply layers right there. So what do you call that? Four ply binding if you add up all the layers, I guess. It just makes it look very fancy. That's nice. And on top of that, check out our inlays. Now the spec sheet says this is real mother of pearl. Now I was a bit skeptical at first because normally these Epiphones just get pearloid, but yes, I'm going to agree. I think that is true mother of pearl. And then the lightning bolts that they've got going on, it contrasts because that's abalone inlay. So you get some of those blues and greens, a little bit of uh, orange right there in that one as well. And that just continues up the fretboard until you get to the 12th fret where you get the double lightning strike. Then you get a tiny one at the 15th fret. And then as I was saying earlier, they just stop doing it for the top three. So that was a nice surprise, you know, even though it was in the spec sheets, I just never realized they changed up the inlays for the Sheraton. 
but this has a pow ferro fretboard so it kind of looks like rosewood but it just has a lot more wood grain to it a lot of times when i treat pow ferro fretboards a lot of gray darkish material comes off of them i'm not going to say that this one didn't but it did seem considerably less than like the lower end epiphones i've demoed as far as neck specs 1.68 inches at the nut width that increases to 2.06 by the 12th first fret neck depth 0.8 and 0.86 by the 12th. This is a very slim neck profile. They call it a slim taper C, and I'd have to agree with that. So if you don't like kind of chunky guitars with thin necks, you won't like this, but if you do, you're gonna love it. And now the headstock. There's one small thing that kind of bugs me on this guitar, and it's the truss rod cover. So there's our cover. It's not necessarily the cover I have something against, it's the screws they used. You'll notice these are shiny gold. <laughs> you think if, if they're going to go to the trouble of doing the pickup covers like this and all the rest of the hardware. But I guess even if you look really closely, the pole pieces are actually kind of shinier gold too. So. But if you're OCD about stuff like that, I guess it's good to know because even the tuners have that aged gold hardware to it. It's pretty cool. And our headstock is three ply bound with the really cool Epiphone headstock shape here with our flower motif. And this is a Graftech nut. Back to the front, in case you missed it, this does not come stock from the factory with a pick guard. I mean, you could add one, but you'd have to purchase it yourself. As far as QC goes, so far, you know, I haven't seen anything that stands out too much. Like, if we get really nitpicky, you can see the black finish kind of ran onto the binding a bit there. And there's some lightly roughed up parts of the binding. When you view the neck joint in direct lighting, you can also see a few areas that have some impressions or chip out areas. I didn't find anything too crazy here. Moving on to the backside, strap buttons are in our regular locations, one down here and one by the heel. And here's a good spot for us to see the three ply binding on the back of the instrument. So no control cavity access or anything like that. So if you want to swap out the pickups in this, it's actually gonna be a little bit difficult. You'll have to fish it through the F holes and that's never fun. Now the pickups actually look to be on a quick connect system. So you might be able to just take that and splice it for, for easy pickup swapping out if you wanted to do that because there's no reason to change out the CTS pots. Those are perfectly fine. But I kind of like being able to see that maple wood grain through that F hole. So if you're thinking of buying one of these, like refinishing it blue to get like a cheap Dave Grohl signature guitar, just remember, it, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to swap out parts. You might need some help on that. But here's something interesting. The neck is not like the body's finish. So this has that eggshell texture. Whereas this, it's like a semi-gloss. But here's what our neck profile looks like. First fret, 12th fret. Here's a close-up of the wolf. You know, Emily Wolf, it kind of makes sense that they have a wolf there. But here's that peekaboo signature, E-Wolf. But so far, I really like the way that these tuners feel. Just remember how saying fingerprints really show on this finish? Yep, they do. But they don't for the aged gold finish on the hardware. And lastly, the weight. This is either going to be a love it or leave it type spec. She prefers heavier guitars, so they kind of spec it heavier at 8 pounds, 12 ounces for this example. So it's roughly 9 pounds, but I've got to say, it feels heavier than that because all the weight is like in the body. Like you can feel that the neck is a little bit heavy too, but it's all in the body. All right, let's go ahead and plug the stealth in and hear how it sounds.
signature guitar what are my final thoughts on the sheraton stealth this surprisingly packs a lot of punch for the dollars i mean we're talking 7.99 brand new does it have the looks yes it's got that in spades if you like the diamond f hole you like the gold hardware and you like the thunderbolt inlays and everything i mean this is a very fancy looking instrument as far as the tones it was good i like the tones of this guitar especially the neck pickup clean that's like where this guitar really screams now the bridge pickup i thought it could be nicer if it was a little bit more hot however it really depends what types of tones you're going for you know the more blues rock a little bit darker sounding i can see why this pickup would suit her style I personally didn't really miss having an additional tone control down here, but that's something you could keep in mind. So if you like the way this thing looks, go ahead and grab it. I think you'll be happy with it. But here's a few other things that you might not get from other videos. I really do not like the tuners they've put on here. I mean, they're Grovers, but they're not very nice in my opinion. I actually dread having to tune this guitar. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So normally when you tune a guitar, the, the tuners are nice and fluid, but this one has like a, a stepping motion. I mean, listen to this. You hear it? It's like the gears didn't get greased or something or they need worked in because when I tune it up, it doesn't fluidly move. I always feel the steps that goes tun, 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 tun. and that just makes tuning kind of annoying. You hear how it's like gripping it? But I do like the way that the tuners feel, so it'd be kind of a disappointment to have to replace these tuners. But as far as staying in tune, once you get it all set up, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. But I do want to commend the frets. This is a 12 inch radius with 22 frets. Normally Epiphone frets are really scratchy sounding, but this one's actually really good. They must have took extra time to make sure the frets were right on this particular one. I was a bit turned off by the weight at first, but sitting and playing this guitar is really where it's at. Since the body's so heavy, it just, it's like a brick. It feels great. It stays anchored. It's not moving around on you. It's really nice to play with when you sit down. And standing up, it was very balanced as well. I didn't notice any neck dive issues. And this isn't even the most gripping strap. It just kind of stays wherever you try to put it. As far as acoustic resonance, it's loud enough to play around a campfire. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out this new guitar with me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.